Welcome back to another uh, one very cold Canadian day. So it makes it perfect for carving. We're going to go a little simpler, a little, little, uh, little bit easier to get a hold of. Just a uh, one and an eighth dowel. This one's uh, poplar, so lightweight. But we're going to do a, a nice geometric pattern down it. It's uh, approximately four feet long. We're going to do a seven eighths uh, rubber foot at the end. Going to mark out for the handle. Then we're going to do a nice geometric pattern down here. So stay tuned for that. So we're starting to get on to where we're going to put the pattern. So start off by just drawing a straight line. This is going to be our reference line. This one I've drawn out, it's 12 inches long. So what we have, the top of it, this is where the handle is going to be, just the small little detail we just carved out. We'll add more detail later. Left uh, about two and a half inches below that and drew a straight line. What I want to do is divide this diameter into four, four equal parts. So as we saw in the other video, the uh, Celtic or Celtic knot video, how we're going to divide it evenly, yes, you could do it with uh, complicated math, but just take a strip of paper, wrap around where you want to go, line it up, mark where the two overlap. Take your paper, cut it across that, those two marks. And this is the circumference of this stick. Now, because this is a constant diameter, you'll only have to do this once. So take your paper, fold it. You have to be pretty, uh, pretty precise here if you want things to line up. Divide it in two. And then fold it once more, make some sharp lines. Now what you've done is you've taken that length and divided it into four equal segments. So instead of doing complicated math, 
you know, just rewrap this paper around. Take your time and uh, line up everything nicely. Hold it in place, and wherever the uh, the overlaps happened, that is going to be your segments. Makes it easy, um, avoids any error when measuring it out. So we're going to do it here. Let's go and do it at the bottom of our section, and then draw straight lines between all your marks. And that, there you have your equal segments. And then just across the lines that we've drawn, we're going to divide it up evenly. Uh, because I made it 12 inches, we're going to go every inch, or uh, for your, everyone who works in metric, 25.4 millimeters. So we just mark across. Let's draw out and uh, circles all around and uh, match up these lines. So we're all set to draw out the pattern. And the mystery pattern that we're doing is puzzle pieces. My wife is a big fan of puzzles. And uh, I figured I'd do a stick for her. Uh, <laughs> I've actually never done one specifically for her yet, and I think I've been getting a few looks. So I've started laying out what the puzzle pattern is going to look like. So you see there are the four different types of, of puzzle patterns. So all we do is we'll, we'll take these squares. We'll see uh, how about that one. I'll just pencil in, and all this is is by eye the little locking pieces of, uh, of what we got going here. Just sketch those out by hand. Nothing uh, doesn't have to be super precise. Erase the, the lines that you don't need. That way it'll be a little easier to follow later. Resketch out everything. And you see there are the puzzles. It's all going to be puzzle pieces all the way down. So let's continue and I'll show uh, once I finish sketching out the entire thing. So about 10 minutes of, uh, of sketching and we got the pattern. Now if you look, it seems complicated but it really isn't. What you do is you go uh, one up, one down, one up, one down. Do these on the inside, the next ones it's, it's honestly the same two pieces drawn over and over again. It looks complicated, but once you start sketching it, it goes really, really quickly. And there you go. So, how we're going over lines is I chose to do wood burning. Now, you could probably do it with a V gouge or a small bit on the Dremel. That might work, one of the uh, diamond bits. But I wanted this pattern to really stand out. I wanted it to uh, nice deep dark lines across, uh, across this wood. It's a bit lighter, so I think the contrast of the wood burning will make this stand out. So we'll just go through and, uh, and go over all the lines. Now if you don't have a wood burning kit, and they're not too expensive, but if you don't have one and you wanted a really quicker way of doing this, um, you could go over it with, a, let's say, a waterproof pen, uh, one of those permanent fine tip markers. And then if you seal it over with uh, polyurethane, that's an easy way too. Um, certainly if it's your first time into woodworking. And you don't want to get all the uh, the carving chisels or maybe a knife or even a I mean this inexpensive wood burning kit is maybe about thirty dollars or so but uh, you can choose how you want to do it I think this is going to turn out great so stay tuned <laughs>
trim this down. Two steps left. Now for uh, for this one we've got to put a finish on and then we're going to do a, a power cord wrap up top and uh, another little power cord loop for uh, for the wrist. So let me show you how we are so far. Nice smooth over top, recessed hole, got the handle part and this in here is going to be where the uh, power cord is going to go. Little design, got our nice puzzle pieces all burnt in, another little uh, Little detail on the just at the bottom of the puzzle pieces and then tapered down to where a uh, 7 8 uh, rubber foot's going to go. So, finish we're going to use is Watco Teak Oil. We've done that before. Just put some in a little container here. Let's put that on. I don't, uh, I don't sense this is going to darken up too, too much, but it's going to take a nice golden color. Actually, a little, little more brown than I expected. It's actually quite nice. A little bit darker. That's nice. All the grain patterns popping. You see that? Very nice. So let me finish all this up, and I'll show you what it is before we put the uh, power cord on. So. Finishes on, looks beautiful, nice, nice brown to it. Uh, all the grains come out. Now we're starting the paracord wrap. So you've seen this on uh, some of my other videos, but we'll go over it again. So you take paracord wrap. I think this is a 532nd paracord. It's black with uh, a little bit of silver in it, a couple of little dots. It's kind of reflective. It's nice. So the handle's going from here to here. The little indents that we made. So you make one strip up, loop it around, and this is the loose end. So I just tape it top and bottom. Then you hold it in. First few, uh, first few wraps are going to be a little squirrely because everything will want to move on you until you get a good tension on. But. Uh, it's a pretty simple wrap. There's not much to it. You just have to have a consistent uh, tension going all the way up. So just keep holding it as you spin. I'm going to do a few more. And we'll be right back. So we've reached the top. You see we've uh, got to where the little notch is. Take the tape off to expose where this uh, the loop that we had left. Holding everything nice and tight with your thumb here. Feed that through. Sometimes easier said than done. Alright, now the loop is going around this free end. So at the bottom, take the tape off here to expose this. Now you're going to pull down. What it's going to do 
is tighten this loop up, locking everything in. And there you go. See? See how it tightened everything up right there at the top? So now you can let go. A nice power cord wrap. What we're going to do is we're going to cut this end and uh, just burn it off using a regular lighter. Same thing up here. We're going to cut this off, burn it, be right back. So you see here, I now melted that nice and flush. No sharp edges. Same thing up here. You can hardly see this one, but that locked it in. We tucked it back in. Melt a little bit of that loop. Nothing's going to loosen up on you. And look at that. Perfect handle. And because we made the notch, it's actually the same diameter as the rest or the original rod was. Very nice handle. So we're just going to add a little loop up here. Little uh, little wrist loop. Call that one done. Oh, I just had a little plastic uh, uh, bead or anything that you have left over. Just put it through the hole that we drove, drilled before. You got your nice little, uh, little wrist loop. That way you could uh, let go of it. it. Still stays with you. Just make it a little longer than where your handle sits. And that way you get plenty of room while you're walking. It doesn't snag on you. And if need be, you have a little extra to be able to hang on to it this way, have a nice tight grip. Stays on your wrist, and with this little uh, little bead, if you ever have to hang it on something, it doesn't wear out the, uh, the power cord as easily. Always a little extra, but again, if you have some kind of nice, uh, nice bead, different colored beads, adds a little detail to it. So there's the handle with a, a little bit of silver in it. Makes a nice pattern. If you keep the tension proper, makes a nice diagonal on it. So you got your nice handle, a little bit of chip carving details. Here's the puzzle pattern that, because uh, my wife loves puzzles, so this one's for her. Nice little, another uh, little chip carving down there. Tapering it all down to a small 7 8 uh, rubber foot. This one is super lightweight. I don't even think this weighs a pound. This is a uh, nice lightweight, perfect. Wife's got uh, smaller hands than me, so this one's uh, only an inch and an eighth, I think. So it's perfect for her. A little, little tiny for me, but uh, man, you could walk with one of these all day. No problems. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Give this one a try. It's really straightforward, really easy, but visual detail adds something to it. So thanks for watching.